There is a person named Dan Hassler Forrest, and he writes a piece for the Washington Post today. He's an author and public speaker on media franchises, cultural theory, and political economy. He works as assistant professor in the media studies department of Utrecht University. And he has a piece today in the Washington Post titled, The Lion King is a Fascistic Story. No remake can change that. Oh my God. I mean, last I checked, The Lion King was actually just a story about lions. But apparently not. Apparently it's about the evils of democracy. And here's what this columnist writes. Last November, Disney broke the internet with its teaser trailer for The Lion King. This 93-second video gave millions of people chills by faithfully recreating key moments from the original film's beloved opening number. But as nostalgic as Circle of Life may make us feel, this bombastic scene is also a painful reminder of the film's ideological agenda. It introduces us to a society where the weak have learned to worship at the feet of the strong. Oh my God. Yeah, the, the, basically, The Lion King is just Hamlet, right? I mean, the, that is the basis of The Lion King. It is the uncle who tries to kill the father, and Mufasa dies, spoiler alert, and then the son has to do something about all of that. It's a, if Hamlet were a straightforward story, then it would look like The Lion King. It's obviously based on The Lion King with, with the toucan as Polonius and the, the whole thing. The, the, the whole thing. The fact that this is now being taken seriously as some sort of metaphor for why monarchy is good is hilarious to me. We may be a little bit too, we may be overanalyzing this thing a little bit too bit uh, too much. This columnist says, as we watch the herbivores congregate to bow down before their newborn ruler, the Lion King offers us a seductive worldview in which absolute power goes unquestioned and where the weak and the vulnerable are fundamentally inferior. In other words, the Lion King offers us a fascist ideology writ large. There seems to be no way out for the forthcoming remake. The first thing to understand about the Lion King is that it isn't in any way about lions or any other animal species. No, it, 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 it kind of is, and it says so in the title, the Lion King, and then also there are only animals and no humans in it. It's amazing how the left will struggle to say that certain things are not metaphors, and then they will immediately say that this is a metaphor for fascism on Earth. As in every fable, a variety of cute and cuddly figures stand in for human societal organizations. Mapping our internalized social hierarchies onto these pristine and neutral world of the animal kingdom renders these power dynamics natural, common sense, and desirable. Okay, so first of all, let's just be real about the animal kingdom. Lions eat zebras. Okay, when they are called the king of the king of the forest, king of the jungle, okay, this has been a thing for quite a while, and that is because the lion is the apex predator in this particular scenario. That's called nature. By using the predator-prey relationships to allegorize human power, the film almost inevitably incorporates the white supremacist worldview. So now, believe it or not, the argument is that The Lion King is about white supremacy. Now, last I checked, Mufasa, his voice in The Lion King, is James Earl Jones, who is black. Simba, in the, in the remake, is played by Donald Glover, who is black. Nala who is his wife, is played by, by Beyonce, who is black. Sarabi, who is his mom, is played by Alfred, uh, Alfred Woodard, who is black. James Earl Jones is still Mufasa and still black. But apparently, this is, it's all white supremacy. It's all white supremacy. Uh, wow. Obviously, such fables can serve politically to ever since, as this columnist for the Washington Post. George Orwell's Animal Farm employed a similar allegory to make class distinctions more blatantly visible and to criticize authoritarian systems of power. Disney's own Robin Hood adaptation similarly associated power systems with animal food chains, but used its allegory to poke fun at the obvious greed and corruption that defined the predatory ruling class. But the sympathies of the Lion King lie elsewhere. Doubling down on Disney's historical obsession with patriarchal monarchies, it places the audience's point of view squarely with the autocratic lions, whose pride rock literally looks down upon all of society's weaker groups, a kind of Trump Tower of the African savanna. So now Mufasa is Trump. Oh man, I love these lions. They're unbelievable. Simba, let's go eat a zebra. When Grand Patriarch Mufasa explains patiently to his son how this division of power works, he emphasizes that the king must maintain balance in their kingdom. This seems fine when we think about the environment where balance sounds great because they're living in the environment and are animals, so yes. But when we consider he's really explaining to his own heir why it's perfectly fine to behave dictatorially, the lion's perspective feels a lot more unsettling. Bad as it is that the powerful are presented as inherently superior to all other things, things get substantially worse once the hyenas are introduced. 
With the lions standing in for the ruling class and the good, herbivores embodying society's decent law-abiding citizens, the hyenas transparently represent the black, brown, and disabled bodies that are forcefully excluded from this fascist society. So the hyenas are black and brown and disabled. Where's the disabled? Is there a disabled hyena? Like a hyena rolling around in a wheelchair in Lion King? Did I miss that part? And the, they're, they're black and brown as opposed to the lions whose voices are all black folks. Noticeably marked by their ethnically coded street accents, the hyenas blatantly symbolized racist and anti-Semitic stereotypes of verminous groups that form an inherent threat to society. Oh, that's what's going on. It's the Jews. How did I miss this whole thing? I mean, maybe I missed it because they're obviously supposed to be Nazis. They have like an actual Nazi march with goose stepping in the original Lion King movie. When Scar sings Be Prepared, the hyenas actually march like Nazis. It's an obvious Nazi allegory. Nonetheless, th this, is so, this is so great. They, this foul betrayal of tradition is predictably orchestrated by Scar, the misfit lion whose opportunistic desire to advance the status of minorities echoes the way conservatives speak of liberal politicians when they act as if compassion is merely opportunism. Simultaneously, his effeminate gestures and lack of interest in heterosexual reproduction mark him as queer, like the vast majority of other villains in Disney's exclusively heterosexual world. What in the world? What? The, uh, guys, did you ever, did I miss this? I feel like, did, did you ever get that all the villains in Disney films are gay? I feel like I missed this part. Uh, that, wow, that's, that's, that's amazing. I, I, Jafar in Aladdin literally wants to have sex with Jasmine throughout the entire film. And Scar is hitting on Simba's mom, if I, if I don't misremember. Adding insult to injury, the social outcast rebellion against Mufasa's autocratic regime is explicitly associated with the imagery of goose-stepping Nazis. They're actually the good guys. But as so often in Hollywood films, the explicit Nazi iconography serves primarily to distract us from the hero's own fascism. Simba's final ascent to the throne, his masculine roar returning Scar's dystopia to its Edenic natural state, is nothing, nothing less than the Fuhrer principle at work. The idea that those we entrust with positions of leadership are blessed with a natural, even divine superiority. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now that Disney has become by far the most powerful entertainment company in the world, we've seen several attempts to update and correct its ideological payload. Maleficent and its forthcoming sequel changed a deeply, deeply sexist fairy tale into a feminist parable about sexual abuse. Aladdin made at least some attempt to mitigate the original film's Islamophobia. Beauty and the Beast included a very minor, openly gay character. The new Ariel will be a mermaid of color, and Mulan has been overhauled to become less offensive to Chinese audiences. But we should get rid of the Lion King, presumably. Oh my. These people are the worst. Ruining everything in American life and culture, making everything worse, all in the name of wokeness.